Hey guys, and welcome back to another Lost Bits video right here on Tetra Bay Gaming, the series where we explore some scrapped, unused, and unseen content in video games. So I asked, and you guys responded loud and clear that you wanted to see a Lost Bits video covering a game from the Legend of Zelda series. It makes sense, since I haven't really covered a Zelda game since my very first Lost Bits video for Wind Waker almost two years ago. As such, in this video, we will be exploring what some people still consider to be the best Zelda game in existence, The Legend of Zelda A Link to the Past. And as always, really quickly, if at any point you guys do enjoy the video, be sure to let me know with a like down below, it seriously helps me out a lot. And with all of that said, grab your Pegasus boots, it is time to find some lost bits. To start things off, let's have a look at some graphics that went unused in the final game. First, there is an unused graphic of some sort of skull statue that can be found in the tile set for Skull Woods. Now, I don't recall any spider-like enemies in the game having a big head that looks like this, so it's unknown who these skulls would have belonged to. Interestingly enough, not only can these skull statues be seen using a tile viewer, but they can also be loaded into the game with a glitch. The glitch looks like a pretty lengthy process, so I'll just leave it to people like D-Pad Gamer to figure out. If you've played A Link to the Past before, you might have noticed that every dungeon has a special looking entrance. Although it's more of an exit to a dungeon, it turns out the Sanctuary 2 was supposed to have this here special entrance that for some reason got scrapped in favor of a more normal looking one. It's kind of weird why they would do this considering everything else in the Sanctuary is so nicely decorated. Next up is an unused keyhole. Not much to say about it, it's a hole for a key that went unused. Go figure. Next are a pair of unused meat graphics, one large and one small. Although they look kind of similar to the bait item from the original NES Legend of Zelda, these meat graphics are stored among the graphics for the small and large magic refill items, so maybe they were also going to be used to refill Link's magic meter. Since these graphics are only called in indoor areas, some also believe that it may have simply been a background object that could be found in houses throughout the game. An unused magical stopwatch looking object also goes unused in the game. This graphic appears alongside other items that enemies drop such as rupees, so it was likely that it too was planned to have been dropped by an enemy. Most speculate that it would have worked just like the magical clock in the original Legend of Zelda and would freeze all on-screen enemies, but who knows, maybe it would have just added more time to an in-game event in which a timer was counting down. If it was to only freeze on-screen enemies, chances are it was scrapped because the Quake Medallion could similarly affect enemies which would render the stopwatch useless. Next is an unused graphic of some Japanese text saying Ken, which means sword in Japanese. Unsurprisingly enough, it can be found near the other sword graphics in the game's memory, so it was likely just a placeholder at one point which the developers neglected to remove. And next up is an unused letter item, which is another item that seemingly would have made a return from the original Legend of Zelda. Featuring a sprite very similar to the dungeon map sprite in the game, and looking even more similar to the artwork for it, this unused item can actually be accessed in the game and used. If loaded in, it will occupy the spot that is normally taken up by the magic mirror. This means that perhaps you would have needed this letter in order to acquire the mirror at some point in development. And oddly enough, if you use this letter in the game, it will act exactly as a magic mirror would. As usual, it's unknown why this item was scrapped, but my guess is that it was part of a larger scrap subquest that the developers found unnecessary. If you've made your way to the end of the ice cavern and have fought the boss, Cold Stare, you can destroy his big ice shield with a fire-based weapon. In the final game, after being destroyed, the shield will oddly just disappear. But it turns out the shield was actually meant to have an animation in which it fades out, and due to a coding bug, we normally can't see it. Thankfully enough, fans have been able to make a patch for the game in order for us to see what it was supposed to look like. Now this next thing isn't an unused graphic, but rather a scrapped upgrade. In the game, Link can acquire an upgrade that reduces how much magic an item uses by half. By messing around with the game's VRAM, this effect can be further upgraded to make items use only a quarter of their normal use. Trying to change the magic meter in any other way will cause it to not work or even use more magic, so it is quite likely that this second magic upgrade at some point might have been accessible in the game. My best guess is that maybe developers thought this might have been an overkill for magic use. Alright, moving along, let's have a look at some unused sprites for the game's enemies and NPCs. First up is an unused bat enemy that was supposed to have made an appearance in the Dark World. And oddly enough, this guy can only be found in the Japanese version of the game. 
Apparently, they would simply just flap around and shoot these also unused fireball shots at Link. Another unused graphic that can be only found in the Japanese version of the game is a sad, crying version of the bully's friend. In the final releases, only the happy expression exists. Probably my favorite unused sprites in this game are the ones for a scrapped, alternate helmet for the soldiers. It is found among the body graphics for the short sword regular soldiers that you meet at the start of the game, implying that this helmet was meant to be for the weaker soldiers in the game. Now there are two prevalent theories as to why this helmet was changed. The first being that if they were to be used for early game enemies, they would have looked far more menacing than they should for weaker enemies. However, the more interesting and in my opinion likely theory is that this helmet is the only one that makes it apparent that there is a human body inside the armor of these soldiers. Now the game suggests that these soldiers are normally good, but they are simply brainwashed due to the game's events rather than being monsters inside or just magical living armor. I'm guessing Nintendo likely didn't want to reinforce that Link was killing other innocent humans that were just brainwashed, so they probably changed this helmet to kind of dehumanize them. There is also another unused soldier type that was also scrapped. This soldier type would carry around a portable cannon of some sort that would shoot out a spike ball. Since they are so functional, chances are they were cut late into the game's development, but as always, it is unclear as to why. Next, another NPC can be found among other graphics for the end game cutscenes. As such, it is believed that they were also meant to be seen in the ending. It appears as if they are jumping for joy, which only reinforces that notion. Although it looks like they might have been some sort of wizards judging by their hat, it is more likely that they were either Dark World or Kakariko Village residents that we never get to see. Or going back to the unused soldier helmet, since they appear to have similar color schemes to the soldiers, maybe they are in fact the soldiers after their brainwashing has been disabled. And lastly, although there isn't an actual unique object for it, there is unused text for a sign that was meant to be used before the entrance to Zora's domain. It would read, Danger, beware of deep water and Zora. A Link to the Past doesn't have any unused music, but it does have one sound that is allegedly unused. Now it's unclear what the sound was for, but some suggest that it was used for a crash handler. Next up are a few normally unused rooms. The first of these rooms is the famous Chris Houlihan room, which can't normally be entered. Although players have figured out exploits to access it, the room was intended to be a failsafe mechanism to prevent the game from crashing if it couldn't determine which room Link should be sent to. The story behind this room was that it was meant to be a secret room with 225 rupees as a reward to the player for discovering it. As to why it's called the Chris Houlihan Room, in October 1990, Nintendo Power held a contest in which a randomly selected winner would have the honor of having their name programmed in a future NES game. The contestants were required to submit a photo of themselves encountering Warmech in Final Fantasy. As you guessed it, one Chris Houlihan was the winner of these sweepstakes, and instead of just being programmed into a future NES game, his name was forever immortalized as an easter egg in one of gaming's most timeless classics. Next are two more unused rooms which can't normally be accessed in the game without using cheat codes. The first of these rooms has a treasure chest with a blue rupee as well as stairs and a teleporter pad, both of which just take Link to an empty room. The other unused room just has a door to another room and some stairs leading upwards. Definitely not the most interesting unused rooms, and I'm guessing they were either early or scrapped designs for rooms meant to be in dungeons at some point in the game's development. And for the last stop in this video, by accessing the game's debug mode, much like in the Sonic the Hedgehog games that I've covered, we can now move Link through basically anything. Walls, trees, enemies, and everything in between, you name it. Not only can this be used as a shortcut while traversing Hyrule, but we can also use it to access areas that we aren't normally supposed to. One thing that I found pretty interesting is the illusion of how big Hyrule Castle really is in the overworld. Surprisingly enough, by walking through the castle and moving one area upwards, we can see that the castle is abruptly just cut off instead. Ever wanted to see what was beyond the edges of the map? Well, turns out if we go past the limits of the map, the game really doesn't know what to do with itself and Link will be stuck in a looping screen of death forever. Or at least until you reset the game. 
and sometimes other effects will occur if you leave the normal game boundaries, such as randomly entering some super glitchy version of the Lost Woods, or a complete game crash with a pleasant sound. By walking through walls in caves, dungeons, and houses, we can see that they are all actually connected. What I mean by this is that if you enter pretty much any house and walk through some walls, you can end up in another house that is meant to be somewhere completely different on the map. Or alternatively, if you enter one of the dungeons, you can end up in a completely different one just by going through a few walls. Now there were quite a few interesting things that I was able to find with this. First off, I was shocked to find out that Chris Houlihan's room, the room which I mentioned was inaccessible without glitching, is really only a short walk from inside the sanctuary. Also, I was able to easily reach the boss Trinex in a really glitchy looking form, but the weirder thing is that some of the rooms adjacent to him, parts of his bodies like his arms can be found by themselves. I honestly have no idea why this could be. Another weird thing that occurred in a dungeon is that I was able to trick the counter that tells you what floor Link is on. Turns out that the stairs to go up to this floor are actually on the same floor, so although the counter goes up, we actually haven't moved. As such, I was able to get the counter to go up and up, even though this dungeon definitely doesn't have this many floors. After reaching the ninth floor, the counter reset to zero. And then nothing, and then things got weird, and the numbers started to glitch out. But the most bizarre thing that happened was that after restarting the game in the mountain cave after getting a game over, after only a few minutes of just crossing some walls, I actually managed to get to the Triforce and beat the game. Wait, what? Anyways, there's probably a ton more cool stuff to see with the debug mode, and I highly recommend you guys try it out for yourselves. I'll leave the action replay code for it in the description below. If you guys do manage to find something cool, be sure to let me know. And with that concludes this Lost Bits video on The Legend of Zelda A Link to the Past, and I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you guys did enjoy it, be sure to click on the card right here to check out other Lost Bits, and also let me know what other Lost Bits you'd like to see next in the comments section below. If you're new to the channel and want to stay up to date, be sure to subscribe and check out my other social media pages as well. All of them will be linked in the description below. And as always guys, thank you all so much for watching today and for all of your amazing support, and I will see you in a bit.